So yeah, that's other big news is the conference gave more details about the ESPN plus deal. They also gave details about the root sports schedule and the ESPN new schedule to run through real quick. The root sports deal is a four year deal. Tom Wister still said he one He thought ESPN plus was the right place to go to two because of the changing landscape of how people consume sports. He wanted a contract long enough for us to have some consistency, but he really didn't want to be locked in. Again, we talk about the changing landscape four years from now, streaming, what platforms people want to use for streaming may be different. Prime. Did, yeah, exactly. He didn't want to be locked in too long. Uh, and I buy that rationale completely as in why an intermediate deal was given. Of course, ESPN plus wasn't there to explain their side, but um there was, he also gave us clarity on the money involved in the ESPN Plus deal, which the simple version of that is money isn't being evenly distributed to schools. Schools had to essentially submit an audit of the equipment they needed to improve their broadcast. And the conference is giving out that money based off of need, specifically for the purchase of the things the schools need. So just a quick example, Idaho State, their production is, of course, not as strong as, let's say, Montana, where Montana is like carried by SWX all the time. Very likely, Idaho State can receive a bigger chunk of that money than Montana because Montana doesn't need help improving their broadcast, but Idaho State sure as hell does. Um, and last, real quick, the, the ESPNU games, these are nationally televised. October 2nd, Montana at Eastern Washington. That's Saturday. And Friday, October 15th, it was moved to Friday to be a night game with no other competition. Um, Montana State at Weber State. Root Sports is only going to carry four games this year. For Vandal fans, there's only one game you got to figure out how to get Root on. Otherwise, Root games are Cal Poly at Montana State October 9th. Seriously, there wasn't anything better. Um, Idaho with Eastern Washington on October 16th. That's the one for us to care about. So if you don't, if you can't watch it on Root, just get your ass to cheating. October 30th, Southern Utah, Montana. And then November 20th, Cat Grizz in Missoula. I'm also looking at that October 30th game. Like there's there was nothing better. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Like, I don't want to nitpick the schedule to that that part too much because honestly, if you like watching the Big Sky games, the root games are the hardest to get a hold of for most people. So it's not like for me, I'm not going to be able to go to Pocatello. I'm kind of happy Idaho. Idaho State's not on Root Sports the last week of the season, so that I have to figure out what the hell am I going to do to watch this. But uh, I, I got I got to tell you when when Mister So talked through some of this stuff. I like the direction. I, I like the ESPN plus stuff. I mean, we already talked about that last episode, but when he gave more details about, you know, the monies have already been dispersed to the university. So there's a chance we will see some broadcast improvements. Now, of course, it's, Chris is right in his piece. This isn't going to turn Portland state into an ESPN college game day type of production or anything. But I mean, the, the bureaucratic processes, if you've ever been involved in a government institution, man, those things can be goddamn slow. This was quick. Still things I'm worried about, but it is becoming more and more clear as this moves on. I'm going to be less right than I am wrong. Um, like, as in, I'm going to miss more than I hit in that piece, yeah. which I'm happy about. Like, of course, I'd rather everything be more enjoyable. Uh, that's it. I am a Root Sports fan. I worry about the future. of. It sounds like we're going to try to get out of that or they're going to try to drop us. Uh, according to you, it sounds like they might, they, I think they got the broadcasting rights for the Kraken. That might be why they only have four games this year, but I like it. It's a great production. Hopefully with all this production stuff, it doesn't matter. And we get more stuff like that. But right now, hands down, every root game we do is leaps and bounds better than anything SWX even does. Like it is the best broadcast. It's just hard to get unless you have direct TV and that once again, People are moving away from that. People have cut the cords. So like me, they watch on YouTube TV or Sling, and that's just – this is not how it is. But all in all, I'm happy with it. I think the conference has done a good job explaining it um, and talking about how it is going to be different. And though I'm not exactly stoked, like just when we were looking for a screenshot on something, it was hard to even find the replay of our event from yesterday under the college football tab. Oh, well, because like – Nobody was scrolling on Pluto to find college football on Pluto. So I have to like adjust my mind thought a little bit that like, yeah, we're still going to be very back depth page of ESPN, watch ESPN and ESPN plus, but like at least we're there. And that ESPN U stuff is going to be huge because other than the HBCUs and really at this point, only the SWAC, not even the MEAC, 
That doesn't happen. There's nobody else on ESPNU except maybe North Dakota State when they play some just huge school or college game day. Actually, I think the year they played South Dakota State, game day was there, and yet the game still was on like ESPN Plus. It wasn't even moved to ESPNU or ESPN2, and game day was there. So the fact that North Dakota State and South Dakota State, possibly, I could be wrong here, I believe, we're not even on ESPN, and we're going to get two games every year for the length of this contract. The pro ESPN plus thing for a very long time because that's I, – I've cut the cord. I cut the cord five or six years ago, uh, which is very weird for a guy that used to work in broadcast television. Um, but anyways, so I've been very hard against – the root deal because I hate root. I have people that I, I work in with in television that work at root and I mean more power to them, but I hate the fact that I cannot stream root at home. The one caveat I had with this ESPN thing was this is great, but I do not want to have our best games on root where I still can't watch them. The athletic reported in June, I think that now that the Kraken are going to be on root, the Trailblazers are going to be on route, and in addition to already having the Mariners and the Timbers, Root is now actively working with at least Fubo TV, Hulu, and YouTube TV to be to offer some sort of streaming in the future. I don't know if it's going to happen in the fall. That was what they were shooting for, but there is going to be some sort of streaming option for Root. And if if they can land that, and we're streaming everything on ESPN Plus, where we get a little bit of money to fix some of the broadcast problems with Idaho State, it's not going to fix that. This is terrible for me to say, but that awful broadcaster, the, that guy that needed to retire 10 years ago talking about that incomplete pass and was 30 yards down the field caught and you know, they've moved on and he's still rambling about how it, it's fourth down and they've got a punt while the next play is going. It's not going to fix those problems. We're still going to have to listen to people that their career spiked as being the the guy for Idaho State, big, big F and whoop. Uh, but if we can now see these root games as well as getting a little bit better production on the things that are just going to show up everywhere else, which you know, Pluto to ESPN Plus, this is fantastic. Uh, but again, for me, this hinges on this root thing. If if root doesn't end up streaming, we're back in the same place that I've been of how do I watch the best games because I don't have root at home and I don't really want to go find a random bar in Spokane with the probably two other vandals that live here. I I'll think you're going to be all right though. missing Cal Poly Montana State. Though, right? <laughs> I know you're really bummed about that one. If Root does get a streaming deal, everything I said complain about Root goes out the window because their product 100%. is great. It's, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's only an access issue at yeah. all. I've actually never heard 100%. anyone bitch about Root Productions. It's just the thing access. people talk about is how the hell do I find it, especially if you're on the East Coast. Me and Chris fans talk about that all the time. I mean, um, we, we get a we get a freaking in studio halftime show with Root Sports with Michael Bump, Bumpus, Angie Mentig, and then we get like guys like Taylor Barton who we've had on the show. Like, the, if if Root could become available, hundred percent we need to keep the Root deal because it reminds me I don't know about you guys of that old timey college football, um, specifically when I used to watch the Cougars a lot, where you had local broadcasters that understood what was happening with a good production. Because right now we have local broadcasters with a subpar production um, and radio guys. This is a full studio cast, and they know. It's like back in the day where like KTVB covered all of the Bronco games and KTIK or whatever, not KTIK, uh, whoever Channel 2 was covered all the Vandal games. You had like a local channel that specialized in that university's game. So they knew the players, they knew the opponents. They, it wasn't like ESPN 3, which we were in the Sun Belt, where they didn't know anything. Root, best broadcast. If they can become readily available, absolutely. I mean, we should we should find a way to do that for sure. 